the Penningtons don't have to hit the road to visit a vineyard. In fact, all they have to do is step out the back door to watch grapes ripen into their signature wine, Slow Turtle. It all started in 2012 when they bought a house that came with a neglected micro vineyard. When we came here, uh, there was a six foot cyclone fence surrounding uh, the vineyard and deer would kind of jump in and get a little confused and bounce around. We didn't realize how much work actually it was going to take to get it to where it is, but we're certainly excited we didn't pull them out because this, this space has kind of become like the heart of the home. To learn more about making wine and viticulture, he enrolled in Texas Tech's online and hands-on Texas Wine Making Certificate program. But first, they overhauled the landscaping and built stylish deer proofing that lets in light and promotes airflow. We wanted to make the vineyard visible from the rest of the property to be able to see in and not have it be a closed wall. So we used the four inch bull wire fence, which you know has pretty good visibility, but it keeps some of the critters out. His grapes are Champanel, a hybrid that's resistant to Pierce's disease. When we moved over to this new trellis system, which is called VSP, vertical shoot positioning, the notion there is to be able to let the shoots uh, grow up uh, straight up and then they'll go ahead and uh, wrap down the top of the rows. You can see on the cordons, which are the arms of the vines, that they have a single wire that they're affixed to, so that's called the cordon wire. And the other wires that we have in pairs going up are called fruiting wires. And I have to do a couple prunings per year because these, these vines are pretty vigorous. I'll actually come out here a couple times a year and do what is called leaf pulling. So I'll pull some leaves in the fruiting zone just so that the grapes can get you know, good exposure to light and, and air as well. All those leaves head to the compost pile. Later, Joel mines it for free natural fertilizer. We get the children involved <laughs> because there's a lot of cleaning up, especially in fall when the leaves are falling, this is covered in, in leaves and it's a lot of work. It's not simply just getting a one person to rake up the leaves. So all four of us get involved and make a pile up the back of the vineyard and the children enjoy throwing them around and jumping in them. Despite good ventilation, rain bombs are more destructive than drought. We have a, a drip line in place. I guess in a typical year, we'd go ahead and water about twice a week through probably harvest, and then we would drop that down to once a week just so that the, uh, the vines and the cordons had a chance to harden a little bit. Um, this year, I haven't watered at all. I haven't needed to. In fact, I have more, more water than I can use, and that's indicative with some of the grapes splitting, and, and, and um, you see some rot as well. It also helps to come out here on a regular basis and pick the grapes that are splitting so that they don't mold as well. And that's where I can get the girls involved and they can come out here and, you know, lead the pack and... We've got some good helpers. Yeah, we've got some good helpers. Sure. Caterpillars can be a problem at Budswell in spring. Bacillus thuringiensis takes care of any chompers that sneak past hand squishing. Birds are the biggest threat as grapes ripen in late summer. When you see the birds start to hang out next to your fruit, um, That's when it's time to net. That's a job that we don't necessarily look forward to because it is a little bit challenging netting, just two people. With this new trellis system, I, I think the nice thing is, is that it's so high up and it's kind of tall on the top that we might be able to get like a V shape where it keeps the, um, it keeps the net further away from the grapes and they're not able to just hang on to the, the netting and get their beak in there. Grapes are produced on last year's wood, so major pruning waits until winter and I'll cut all of the old shoots so that I'm leaving two buds for the spring. So for example, here's our um, trunk. These are our cordons. So you can see here that this is last year's wood. You can tell from the color. And so I left one bud here, one bud here. And you can see you have a shoot here and a shoot here. And as we said before, fruit comes off of last year's wood. So this is last year's wood. So we have two clusters, two clusters. So here's, um, you know, I would have pruned it here. I would have pruned here, 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 all the way out. And again, you're getting around 24 clusters on this side. And we'll have the same here where this would have been the shoot. I would have pruned here. I would have pruned here, there, there and so everything that you see in terms of all these shoots and all the canopy that's all from this year so at the end of last spring all you would see would be this cordon and it kind of looks like deer antlers 
Narinda twirled some of the leftovers into outdoor lighting with a twist. I did a bit of homework and got myself a, a beach ball and blew it up and then wrapped the vines around it using some twine to hold it together and, and simply let the beach ball, the air come out of the beach ball and pull it out. We got a big PVC tube and same thing, we sort of just wrapped the vines around and very gently pulled it out. With that, we were able to put it out in the children's play area so we could kind of marry a little bit about what's going on here in the vineyard out into the children's area. And so they've got some great, fabulous lighting for when they play out there at nighttime now. Usually the grapes ripen in early August. Early July, you'll start to see them gradually turn like a purplish black color. And in terms of when they're ready, uh, I'll start taking samples of grapes in mid-July and I'll go ahead and take a look at what their sugar levels are and their acidity. If I left these on the vine, for example, until late August, I'd still have a lot of sugar. The sugar doesn't go anywhere, um, but my acidity level would drop off and it would have, be very flat. So there's kind of this optimum time of where sugar and acidity levels are at, you know, they're, they're at their, the right combination. What we'll do is we'll just go ahead and cut each of the clusters and we'll put the clusters in a, um, in a few trays and then we'll take the trays up and start to pick the, um, the most suitable grapes off and discard the rest. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and crush the grapes. So uh, since our yield isn't high by commercial standards, we'll have the girls go ahead and you know, clean their feet then get in there and start breaking the skins. And then once all the grapes are, the skins are broken, then we'll go ahead and add some yeast and perhaps some yeast nutrients as well. We'll put them in the winery and get the temperature in the kind of mid-70s. That's an ideal temperature for fermentation. And over the course of a week, the, um, the yeast will start to interact with the sugars in the grape. Fermentation is yeast interacting with sugar, giving you carbon dioxide and alcohol. Typically, the process takes nine months, a month in a small oak barrel, and eight in stainless steel. So what does the wine taste like? I'm from originally Melbourne, Australia, and my father introduced me to red wine and when I go home we still enjoy a nice bottle of Australian wine. It's usually a lot heavier, your Shiraz and Cabernet Sauvignon for example. So tasting this for the first time it was certainly very different to anything I had tasted before in regards to a red wine. It's a lot lighter, um, I felt a lot fresher, something that you'd enjoy perhaps more on a summer's day than the heavier wine in winter. And the colour is beautiful, it's, yeah. a, it's a nice garnet, garnet red colour. Although winemaking was not on their project list, slow turtles become part of their family story. I think it's certainly very educational, not only for us, but the young children getting out here and seeing things grow. And I think it's probably good for the girls as well to be able to see something from start to finish. And we'll make a finished product in terms of a wine with a label and see, you know, people, people enjoy that. So in terms of even just creating a product, they're getting exposure to that from a pretty early age. Mm -hmm.